This is the Go Maluku podcast. Welcome to the third day of the expert workshop on enhanced participation of indigenous peoples representative institutions here in Geneva. Um, it's been a long day again, um, discussing, continue on, continuing on with the discussions uh, from yesterday on selection criteria and in the afternoon we had three hours to talk about selection mechanism. Um, let me start off with, uh, with Ini, who kicked off this afternoon on talking about selection mechanism. Um, and of course, you, 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 you alluded to, to, the select, uh, to, to the story of your own community and the representative institutions that you represent. Um, can you briefly discuss the relevance of, of that story to the particular discussions that we're having today? Uh, yes, I would say that, uh, that actually just bringing this, uh, how we do it at the home, mm. is one of the mechanisms that maybe we can think that we can use it in, use it in general, mm. so somehow you're adapting to mm. our realities. Mm. No? And I just was uh, just thinking mm. uh, in Kunayala, uh, how we do it, and the communities, how it also the topics get to the ground, yeah. straight to the communities, and how they are involved in decision making. Yeah. Even that there are just people like five people representing them, yeah. but there are hundreds of people that they have opportunity to this, uh, to have that uh, conversation at home, yeah. Yeah, uh, a, mon a month previous yeah. of the assemblies. Yeah. So. We're talking about the selection mechanism and yes. how we should do that. So I just was thinking about it and also realizing then, then that uh, a lot of uh, territories maybe wouldn't be involved because yeah. it's not what they would like yeah. or they're not into this topic. Yeah. And oh yeah, that's kind of, I would say like quickly, just, but we can for later. Yeah. Okay. And Frank, you, you are ambassador of um, representing many indigenous people's representative institutions. Um, do you have a selection mechanism in NCAI that might be useful for well, this particular process? I don't know so much as that. We have a, uh, you know, we have election for officers mm -hmm. within the organization, mm -hmm. and then each of the individual nations has their own uh, governing mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Uh, constitutions and other other governing documents, and they, you know the way they set it up. But then we have large uh, large meetings several times a year, and at those meetings we develop <clears throat> develop and adopt uh, resolutions. Mm. And so the work here and the international issues that we do is driven largely by the content of those resolutions. Mm. Uh, their standing resolutions, so many of them have been in place for a number of years, mm. that give guidance to how we're, what we're working on mm. here. So uh, while we didn't have a direct discussion about this issue mm. and, as it was laid out, we have had a discussion about participation. Mm. And so we, you know, we have resolutions that, that pushed us towards the, the negotiating, uh, negotiations for uh, in, in indigenous nation participation mm. in UN fora mm. across the board, mm. and then that led to you know all the work we did with the General Assembly, and it also led to this this particular meeting. Mm. Uh, as you know, I was at Quito, and was uh, uh, because of my uh, insistence that we have a paper that comes out of it, I ended up being the chair of the drafting committee mm. to draft the, that, the, the, the Quito document, mm. which has been used as a premise for and laid out the issues mm. that we're talking about here mm. and helped to bring about this workshop. Mm. Uh, and so, and that happened just, just before the pandemic. Mm. Uh, and so, but that's, uh, so the process that we go through is, Maybe it's not debating the particular questions that were that were on the list, mm -hmm. but it was with the, uh, the the charge that I came here with was 
to work on this issue, to work on participation mm. of our indigenous nations, mm. of our, you know, the tribal nations. Mm. And uh, to do that in a manner which we did, to that would satisfy what we need as, as sovereign nations in the U.S., working in concert with the, the other sovereign nations mm. and nations that may not be able to call themselves sovereign, but mm. are you know, the other peoples of the world, mm. the other indigenous peoples of the world, with their representative institutions, mm. which takes us back mm. to the Alta Statement mm. on participation. Mm. Okay, um, I'll move to Tiana. I mean, <clears throat> but tell me, thinking about you know perspective from your own iwi, mm -hmm. um, how did you kind of perceive this discussions about um, you know s selection criteria and selection mechanism? Is it something that 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 um, that would be able to get your iwis involved? Did you did you see this discussion? I do identify yourself, your community in this discussion. Yes and no. Like mm -hmm. I think in terms of like, you know, a lot of the conversation today was like mm. having someone of high integrity mm. has high expertise of the mm. entire region. Mm. And for us back home, we have those people that have been involved in these processes mm. for, for many years. Some mm. were involved in the enhanced participation for sure. Mm. And so it's figuring out a way to make that accessible for them to mm. come in. Um, but no, also because uh, some of the conversation today was a little bit uh, confusing or confused by different perspectives given mm. where people came back to like the um, selection process mm. or criteria um, where it wasn't necessarily grounded in like principled approaches of does, does this process infringe on self-determination mm. Does this process actually, mm. yeah, and if it does that, how is that actually going to move people towards mm. enhanced participation? Mm. And, you know, a comment at the end was like, um, if there is, um, like, reviews or whatever into yeah. whether or not people are eligible, mm. yeah, where's the conflict there? Mm. Yeah, an interesting day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there was a lot of discussions about the role of regions uh, in the mechanism, selection mechanism. Um, <clears throat> uh, there is general concerns about, um, I think one of the um, participants uh, mentioned uh, how uh, the, the idea of having seven uh, seats for the mechanism, for example, has been, uh, has been uh, mentioned. And, and they're also afraid that, 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 uh, that the region, specific region has a, has a very um, uh, distinct uh, government uh, representative institutions that may not well be understood by other regions, um, <clears throat> and and I just wondered, um, is is there a role for regions uh, to make this uh, in a selection mechanism um, for enhanced participation at the Human Rights Council? Let's just start with you, um, Frank. Okay. Well, um, we need a. We were talking about criteria and mechanism today. And a mechanism for actually um, accrediting those people who, those representative institutions that will be able to have this special status that we're referring to, that we're negotiating here. And that accreditation is going to deal with all seven regions of the world, mm. uh, indigenous regions. And we have given, there were several examples given of how this has been done in other UN fora, mm. uh, how this, this has been put together. Uh, one example that Kenneth Deer spoke to and that I supported his, mm. his thing was using the, the process that is for choosing the seven indigenous members of the facilitated working group. Mm for the local communities and indigenous peoples platform at the UNFCCC. Mm. And the idea that, that each region chose its own mm. representative mm. And, a, and, a, and a support, two people mm. from each region yep. that were with one holding the seat, mm. but, uh, but a, an alternate mm. in each case. 
And uh, that left the decision to the region, which I think addressed some of the concerns, because people were saying, how can some other region tell us who we're going to be able to, mm. who we're going to put in there? Mm. Well, once you have the body there mm. of people, mm. then uh, Kenneth Deer spoke quite eloquently about the voluntary fund and the, and the creation of the voluntary mm. fund. And what was it, 85, I believe it was. And, and how he was one of the, the first members on there. And about how that helped build trust between indigenous peoples and the, mm. the parties, you know, for the UN. And that, then that that process worked with representatives from various regions that came together to do that work. Well, we're sort of looking at the same kind of a model in a way. Yep. With this is the idea that, that we will select people to, uh, you know, to serve, uh, to, to be part of this mm. mechanism for accrediting people. Mm. Now, it's really important to draw that distinction between the mechanism for accrediting people and then how the people that are once they're accredited, how they then participate. Mm. Those are two different processes. Yep. And they, they get conflated sometimes yeah. in people's minds. Mm. And I think that has led to some of the confusion and mm. some of the discussion. Yep. But they are separate processes. Mm. And for instance, any, you know, it's, it's certainly my position that any, uh, any of our indigenous governing bodies, mm. uh, representative institutions, mm. uh, and that long list of, of governing bodies uh, that's in the ALTA document, mm. that uh, anyone from all, anywhere in the world could get accredited. But we all know that few are going to be able to take the time and or have the money mm. to be able to come to, to mm. a meeting. And it's going to be you know, that they will, they'll end up picking someone to represent mm. one or more of them yep. to come. Yep. So we'll have a process here so that mm. the, the but, but in order to have the authority to speak, you will need to be accredited. Mm. Then you can use that authority to send an ambassador or send yeah. somebody or, or designate in a group some, yeah. someone to speak yeah. on an issue. Yeah. And so uh, trying to sort this through so that people can look at it, I think that, I believe this is where we're headed. Yeah. Uh, and I'm hopeful that we're gonna, gonna get there. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I would uh, go a little, a little bit deeper related uh, of the facilitators and working group and because uh, we have to be clear, the rules has to be clear yeah. how it's made a selection yeah. uh, of the representative from different regions. And that's the first thing. This is yeah. important if we are going like uh, further on this yeah. matter. Um, I would say, for example, from a region, yeah. I actually don't know how it happened. Yeah. So, and having this example, We'd go, okay, this is one way, yeah. but we need to make it a better yeah. in this way. They make it, the rules clear how it would be the, the mechanism yeah. and everything. So, yeah, but uh, at least we have something yeah. that we can see, okay, this is the way, mm -hmm. but we, we can make it better yeah. and how we can uh, improve that. Yeah. So, and that's why it's important the, the meetings. And, and we have, uh, like, CAC, so we have a, uh, that is uh, the yeah. thing that we have, but it's it is really important that we could come and yeah. bring the ideas. But I wish we had uh, uh, more time also for like each uh, social cultural region to to talk each other mm. and then come together with, mm. with an idea. Yeah, the time is something that that is definitely running out in this <laughs> in this workshop yeah. for further discussion. I know we had caucus. I don't know if you call it emergency, but uh, but uh, quite a quite a. Um, uh, yeah, caucus this afternoon on trying to figure out uh, where indigenous peoples collectively are at in this in this workshop. Um, Tiana, do you have anything to add about role of regions in selection mechanism? I guess for the Pacific, it's a widow, a challenge mm. in how we organize because we're probably the least structurally organized in terms of mm. having a body that would help run mm. the uh, selection process. Mm. Um, and so what we need to make sure out of this is that that through the process, what we determine is that mm. the person has a wide range of mm. support and a wide mandate rather than a 
you know, a mandate maybe solely from their islands, their, mm. their nations, their place of mm. being, and not necessarily the consensus of the entire region. Yeah. Um, which we've seen happen for the Pacific and other yeah. mechanisms. So yeah. there would be a way to avoid yeah. that yeah. from happening. And I think part of it is that we've been really hesitant to try to impose a system on yeah. a region. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That we're, we're trying to <coughs> impose an opportunity for the region to organize. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the way to put it. <laughs> well, well some, some did say it's, it's a moment to kind of in, be introspective about your own region and your national yeah. Yeah. Uh, your representative institutions. Yeah. And of course, the, there's demand about transparency well, and accountability. And, and you've, got, you've got issues of, of, uh, you know, of distance. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in the case of the Pacific, you have huge distance between r different parts of the region. But you also have technological yeah. Yeah. Dif you know, yeah. great disparity yeah. Yeah. between the uh, developed nations and the undeveloped, and also the ideologies that have framed where both some indigenous peoples see themselves as indigenous peoples, or some indigenous peoples maybe term, them, term themselves as local communities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because of oh. how they've been colonized, or just where yeah. they've reached. In, mm. in this, in this we were on a, on a food security uh, uh, webinar, and one of the participants had to drive four and a half hours to get signal so that he could participate. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> oh. yeah. So uh, the, those, that, that's, a, that's a big issue for us. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, another sticking point that um, indigenous peoples themselves had uh, amongst each other was the role of states in the selection mechanism. And I know that the states have left the room, so we can talk a little bit more about, um, about whether, you know, what were the rationale, I mean, uh, or what, perhaps, uh, perhaps maybe people are kind of anticipating some pushback, perhaps. Um, or, of course, indigenous peoples are here to ask for the most ideal. Um, <clears throat> Uh, scenario uh, in this particular process. Um, yet, um, states are relatively silent on this matter uh, in terms of how they see themselves in, 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 this, in this accreditation process. So, so I just wondered, I mean, I know some, some, some of you have expressed your positions already, but maybe uh, reflect a little bit more on, on how, how, how you see the role of states in the selection mechanism, if any. Um. Any? No, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that uh, having been involved in this process for quite mm. a long time and gone through thousands of hours of discussion mm. on the resolution that we were proposing for the General Assembly uh, and having the whole question about accreditation being one of the big hang-ups mm. and the idea that, that there would be states and indigenous people involved in mm. that uh, you know, we spent a lot of time wanting to make sure that somebody didn't have a veto mm. because there were nations that mm. wanted, they said, it's fine, you could do this, but if we disagree, it's all, it's someone's out. Mm. And we don't even have to tell you why. Mm. We just say we disagree and that's it. Mm. Well, so having a veto over this would, would, be, uh, would be a real issue. Mm. And so uh, the fact that, uh, that here at the Human Rights Council, we have uh, we have proposed that it be all indigenous people involved. All, a couple people did speak to the idea of of you know nation states being uh, some role, playing some role in it. Uh, we're we're looking at the idea, and I, I'm certainly not in favor of that. I think that it ought to be uh, be run by indigenous people, and it ought to be indigenous people that are on this panel. Uh, you know, and that's that's what we should shoot for. Mm. And if there's some modification to that, uh, you know, barring a veto, we might be able to accept some. Mm. But I would, uh, at this point, I would say that we should we should our, our, we should be looking for this. And there's support from the states for this. Mm. A number yes. of states have come out strongly mm. that it should be uh, be indigenous people on the panel, and it should be chosen by indigenous mm. people. Mm. It should be an indigenous process. And uh, so that's, uh, 
uh, you know, I think that that's, to me, that's what we ought to be, uh, ought to be shooting for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot to mention that there were, there were in fact, uh, many states who spoke out today were very much in favor of, of having um, indigenous peoples only on the mechanism. That is where we, we have to go, like, go, that's the way. Yeah. So it has to be indigenous people involved on, yeah. on these matters. But actually, mm -hmm. uh, someone told that it, who better than us that we know each other mm. and know yeah. and yeah. what's yeah. happening in our yeah. mm -hmm. different nations. So. Mm. I totally but agree with what you said. Ecuador came out today to propose half and half composition. Um, what do you think about that from uh, from Latin America? Oh, like, uh, but we can see in general, for example, in Ecuador, mm. first of all, what's going on in Ecuador, mm. how is the relationship mm. between uh, state and indigenous people. Mm. So maybe one of the other things is that is what they like uh, they say here mm. and what can happen mm. and after so i wouldn't like uh, I, I can say that maybe the indigenous people from ecuador mm. they wouldn't like the idea mm. that the uh, state being involved mm. in the matters maybe for the state they okay they see this not gonna be an issue but mm. from mm. our our brothers our sister mm. I don't think that they would like the, the idea. Mm. Well, you know, I think it should be mentioned that when we were going through the General Assembly, there are different levels of decisions that are made at the General Assembly mm. versus what are made here mm. at the Human Rights Council. And there, because of that different level of decisions, there may be uh, a different level of cons less concern mm. that about maintaining a veto. Mm. But I know that there still were some countries that see, that were speaking, mm. seemed to speak to the idea that something that would be leading towards that. Mm. But we're, we're still in, we have another day and then, then yeah. they'll be working on a report and, and uh, you know, we have months to go before things actually happen. So yeah. uh, we, we really don't know where we are in mm. the process right yeah. now, other than we've had some long days with some uh, somewhat confusing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I I would warn against state involvement, particularly for the purpose of the Human Rights Council, whereby the reasons why Indigenous peoples are, are likely coming to agenda items of the Human Rights Council is against things that are happening for their people in in their mm. nation states, and mm. so if nation states were able to determine whether or not they were mm. able to be selected mm. then I just I don't think the consequences mm. and or if a state you know if the reprisals that states cause mm. indigenous peoples mm. for me it's too much of a conflict of mm. interest for them to have any mm. kind of involvement mm. um, yeah and that also goes against self-determination yeah all of the principles that um, we're here fighting for yeah, I mean the 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 issues of reprisal came up quite a lot today, um, <clears throat> and of course we we all remember what happened this year, earlier this year, um, and um, and this is something that 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 actually needs to be taken more seriously, perhaps um, at this level, to ensure the the level of participation that 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 indigenous peoples would want. Um, uh, when I'm very optimistic, when they, <laughs> they 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 manage to complete this process, um, so um, I guess uh, we should wrap up. So I guess I'll ask the last question. I would, I would just say one yeah. thing: it isn't if we complete the process; mm. it's when. When? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I say when? Did I, did I say if? If. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when? When? I'm pretty sure I said when. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. And, and there is another topic um, like in the out in the end. Yeah. If. When we have everything, yeah. and then we need to work on cap capacity building. Uh -huh. yeah. So this is another thing yeah. that uh, we have to have on my yeah. uh, mind. I, I swear I said when. Um, <laughs> I have to, I have to, we have to re repeat it. Um, I was so conscious to say when because it's, it's, I'm optimistic. Didn't, isn't it what I said? Did I say pessimistic? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Um, say it again. And yeah, so going to when. Uh, uh, there we go. Right yes. There. yes. Um, Stand corrected. So, um, so I guess tomorrow, unpredictable, uncertain. Um, so let's let's because we finished the thematic discussions for this workshop today. Perhaps uh, to end the end the broadcast, I would like to ask each of you just.
just broad reflection um, on, on, on what, what, what happened in the last three days. Um, and um, no, I was going to ask and your thoughts for tomorrow, but just, just, just broad <laughs> reflection uh, for the last, last three days um, from where you were sitting, Ini as an expert. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really interesting, like uh, how everyone came out with it. Some, some like information, comments, and also uh, that's kind of like uh, listening to the state's uh, positions is those three days has been like, I don't know if it's uh, just an illusion that being there all, all positive mm. and but uh, I know that this is we are on the way but there is a lot of things mm. ahead and months and mm. more work for our um, our team mm. that is coordinating mm. uh, so uh, but I, I will keep uh, my positive uh, thoughts that we uh, when we get everything done, so mm. we, just, we just started. Uh, like, that's the only thing I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Or reflections. Um, it's been an interesting process. I didn't necessarily uh, think there would be the hiccups that we've encountered, but um, I think that's good because it shows where we are united as Indigenous peoples, where we have capacity to mm. grow and and how we move forward mm. about when this happens and like what the next big rocks or big levers for us to mm. move are um, as people. Yeah, mm. still optimistic, but yeah, it was an interesting but, day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess, Frank, you have the last words. Well, I think what, what I think about is that as we look through this process, when we were working on the resolution, which was unsuccessful at the General Assembly, mm. um, for the, one of the first times uh, when we went into the big rooms for the negotiation, the room is divided in half and states were here and indigenous people were here. Mm. And we alternated speakers. Mm. And people in the system said they'd never seen that happen before. Mm. That was an accomplishment. Even if we didn't get the resolution, we accomplished something just by that. Mm. In here, we have, we're, there's no order to the speaking. Mm. It's whoever gets up there first, the speakers yeah. come in. We're alternating in terms of facilitation, yeah. and we're alternating speakers, and not it's just alternating, but there's no real order. Mm. So we've proved that this can work. Mm. So this is a demonstration of what we're trying to accomplish. Mm. And so we have already accomplished all of that mm. just by being here and by mm. doing this. But the thing that'll ice the cake is when we can actually get the get the account. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, that'll be the thing that that's yeah. the. Excuse yeah. me for a food reference. Yeah. It is getting dinner time. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is already set, this already sets a precedence for for what what could come next. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, okay. Um, it's almost seven. I know, I know Frank has meeting and everybody's hungry, so let's stop here and then um, and hopefully we'll have the final or maybe penultimate um, debrief um, tomorrow because Friday there's another debrief, right? So <laughs> <laughs> debrief after debrief, uh, maybe for the whole, whole thing. So, so stay tuned um, and thanks for, thanks for tuning in, listening to us. My friends, you can now also listen to the Gomu Local Podcast on Spotify. Listen while you use other apps or do other things. If you don't have Spotify, just open your Apple or Google Podcast or your favorite podcasting app and search for the Gomu Local Podcast.